What do you say, everybody? Paul from Cleveland. Out in the garage, this is not going to be a cigar review. Uh, this is going to be a project video. Haven't done a video for a while, and I thought, you know, time to get out and do something. I'm a uh, third shift worker now, so if this video is a bit disjointed, I'm operating on very little sleep right now. And uh, yeah, so what am I doing? Cigar holders. I was contacted recently through the comments section of one of my videos. I think it was the General Grant uh, Cheap Cigar Review. And in that uh, video, I talked about how I enjoyed smoking cigars with a cigar holder. Well, someone saw that video and reached out to me and wanted to know, you know, what do you charge for cigar holders? Well, the answer to that is nothing because I'm not in the cigar holder making business. You know, I'm not soliciting orders. That, that's, you know, I've got a full-time job. That's not what I do. But in this case, I thought it would give me a chance to, one, just, you know, get out here and do something. Um, and two, it would let me break out my new toy. I wanted for a, a long time to uh, get a mini lathe and, excuse me, when I really wanted it and really could have used it back, you know, six, seven, eight years ago when I was trying to get into smoking pipe making, back then I couldn't afford it. The, the money just wasn't there. These things run, you know, at that time they were running $400, $450, and I didn't have $4, you know, at that time. So money's not quite the issue now, and I found this on eBay at a really good price, so I thought, well, you know, get it, and just, just get it. You'll figure out something to do with it. So I got it, and it's been sitting in a crate in my garage and I thought, hey, this will give me a chance to uh, um, break this thing out, do something with it, and, you know, do a video in the process. Now, cigar holders. I liked smoking a cigar with a cigar holder because it was fun, quirky, different, to me, it had a uh, kind of a cool retro vibe kind of thing, old school sort of, you know, feel. And I like that, you know. I like things that are a little offbeat, a little quirky. I, I enjoy that. You know, if you've watched any of my videos, you probably gathered, you know, the fact that or figured out that I, I'm really not a mainstream kind of person. Anything that's mainstream and, you know, popular with the mainstream not really my thing. I, I, I really kind of like being different. And to me, that was something that was just kind of, you know, different. So anyway, cigar holders. Now, what I really wasn't aware of at the time was that my idea of a cigar holder is really kind of a hybrid cigar holder. What do I mean by that? Now, the one that the guy was talking about or, or referencing in uh, that video was this one here. Um, I knocked this out from a piece of um, acrylic. It was an acrylic pin blank is what it was. And just, you know, knocked it out from an acrylic pin blank. Now, there were some pros and cons to this cigar holder. One of the things that I liked, and, and where I'm coming at from this idea of a hybrid cigar holder, is this thing was just big enough to where when I was smoking those general grants with it, if I was out here you know, working or doing something and I needed, I could lay it down on the edge of the uh, workbench and it had enough mass to hold the cigar in place and it wouldn't fall off, wouldn't roll around and so forth. 
That's kind of what I mean by a hybrid cigar holder. It's a combination of a cigar holder and a cigar tip. Because those are actually, you know, two completely different things. You know, on the one hand, there are cigar holders, you know, clips that you can clip on a cigar that holds a cigar while you, you know, need to devote your hands to doing something else. A uh, good example, golfers. They make specific cigar holders for golfers that when a golfer's on the links and golfing, they can use this holder thing to hold a cigar while they're teeing off or, you know, putting or whatever they're doing. That's one type of cigar holder. And then there's a cigar tip, which you know, the classic example of cigar tip is the cigar tips that George Burns used, the old, you know, old school Hollywood comedian. In all of his publicity photos, you see him, you know, holding his cigar and on the end of the cigar is a little tip. He didn't use the tip to hold the cigar. It was merely just, you know, the end to put in his mouth to smoke. My ideal, uh, and why I call it a hybrid, is that I, I combine those two things. A cigar tip, but a cigar tip that's big enough to be a holder so that you could, you know, lay it down, go hands-free, whatever you need to do. Also big enough to where you could hold the cigar by the holder. So I really wasn't aware of the fact that I was kind of making something that was a little bit different until I kind of did a little bit of research and it's like, oh, you know, I'm not really making a traditional holder or a traditional tip. I'm kind of making a combo, you know, a combo thing here. So anyway, so the, my message here to the gentleman who reached out to me, um, understand that I'm going to make a specific thing. I'm going to make that hybrid style cigar holder. Hopefully that's what you're looking for. Um, I'm also going to exercise some artistic license and make it Oh, I want to. If it ends up being something that you're not really interested in, oh well, no harm. Um, if it is, we'll figure something out. So, yeah, cigar holders. I'm going to try making some cigar holders. Um, let's talk about something else. Ring gauges. One of the issues that I've had in the past when I've made my own cigar holders is it's very difficult to make a cigar holder to a specific ring gauge when all you have are drill bits set to a certain size. Ring gauges are measured in 64ths of an inch. So a 53 ring gauge is 53 64ths of an inch. Well, it's kind of hard to get 53 64ths of an inch when you only have, you know, set sizes in drill bits. That's where this device comes in. I never really could, you know, dial in a good diameter for a cigar holder because I was stuck with using a drill press and, you know, specific size drill bits. With this, I can use an internal, you know, boring bar and actually get, you know, a specific ring gauge. One of the, you know, advantages of this tool. Um, there is a certain disadvantage that I came, you know, that I figured out or I ran into when I was making my own cigar holders, and that is cigars tend to be large. I mean, bigger cigars today are, are more in fashion than what they were years ago. It's not uncommon today to see a full 64 gauge cigar. I mean, a one-inch diameter cigar. Uh, I think some of the products by Nub, I think, are 64 ring gauges, and some of the newer cigar makers make a full 64 ring gauge cigar. One inch is big in terms of the traditional materials that people like me have used in the past for making smoking pipes. 
you think about it, the smoking pipe stem or the barrel of a smoking pipe is a fairly thin thing. And that opens the door up to a variety of different materials like, oh, let me see if I can find one. Acrylic pin bikes. It was very easy to use these to make um, a cigar holder or to use these as accent materials. Or not in a cigar holder, in a, in a, in a pipe barrel. You know, it's really easy to incorporate this kind of material into a pipe barrel because very seldom were you ever making a smoking pipe that was bigger than this three-quarter inch stock material. So the world was wide open when it came to making, you know, smoking pipes and you know, smoking pipe barrels. It gets much more difficult when you're making a cigar holder and you're targeting a larger size cigar. Now, this one that I made for smoking those general grants. Um, this was probably the largest cigar holder that I could have made. This was an acrylic pin mic. And this is probably the largest size cigar that I could get with a three quarter inch acrylic pin mic. And I don't even remember now what the ring gauge is for this 46, 48, something like that. Anything bigger than that, anything up in the 50s you could not do with an acrylic pin blank. So then you have to, you know, go to a larger size material, material, um, round bar stock, wood stock, um, you know, anything else that you can find that's bigger. Okay, let's go freehand here and take a look at what we got. What was I able to round up the leftover remnants of uh, back when I was making smoking pipes. Well, we've got we've got some Delrin rods um, for making the actual uh, tip or stem. I've got some polystyrene. I've got some maple wood here. And then I've got some other woods over here. Some of this stuff, I don't even remember what it is. Um, I try several of these, a couple of different ones. Maybe I'll, uh, you know, I'll mix it up and maybe make one out of each type of wood. I don't know, but these are all leftover bits and bobs from when I uh, was uh, trying to make smoking pipes. So let's start with this stuff first, and if it doesn't go well with this, um, yeah, all we'll right. Go from there. In order to determine whether or not I was going to be able to do this project with the resources that I had. I cut out several blanks from the wood pieces that I showed earlier. I drilled a quarter inch hole through the center and then mounted them on a quarter inch bolt that I had laying around in my parts bin. I then took that bolt and mounted it in the lathe chuck and using some old uh, carbide cutters that I bought from Harbor Freight years ago, I just trimmed them down mainly to see whether or not it was even going to work you know, and how good the uh, carbide cutters would do cutting wood stock. It actually worked surprisingly well. And uh, yeah, you can see here that it actually turned this material fairly well. It only took about a half hour, but I was able to turn three good blanks, good enough to use for this project. The one on the right there might be a little small, so I may have to turn a fourth one. Otherwise, as a proof of concept, this worked great. Now, I apologize, the next clip is a little long-winded, but it's actually the most important clip of this whole series. <clears throat> All right, guys, let's get a game plan going here. Um, the guy that contacted me asked me about four different ring gauges, 53, 52, 49, and 45. Typically, cigar holders come in two ring gauges. They'll cover two ring gauges. So in this case, I can cover 52 and 53 with one cigar holder. And then I'll make a second one that is a 49, 48, and the third one, that's a 45-44. So you actually get three 
cigar holders here, but they actually cover a span of six different ring gauges. That's the plan I'm going to go with. Now I have to work out, well, okay, what size material do I use? What size drill bits do I need to use? And so forth. Now, what I want to do with this uh, setup is, let me come down here, move the calculator. This is, uh, these are going to be made in two different pieces. There's going to be the, uh, the wood section out here that has the, you know, the chamber that the cigar fits into. And then there'll be, you know, the tip part of it here. And then in between the two, there'll be a tenon that goes in there like so. And that's, you know, and then of course, there'll be an accent material piece in here. I haven't totally figured out what to do with that yet. And then all of this will get glued together. So I need to know what size of Delrin do I use? What size holes do I drill? Particularly what size hole do I drill for the tenon? There's several possibilities for that. Let's go back up here. Uh, well, I've got a set of drill bits over here, and I need to clean these up because they're getting rusty being out here in this damp garage. And with these drill bits, I can cover anywhere from a half inch all the way up to an inch. And I have did the math on those, and that goes anywhere from 0.5 inches all the way up to one inch. And so what I need to do is I need to select a size of drill bit to drill this tenon hole here. Actually, what I will do to start with is, I've actually drawn this wrong. This hole will actually extend all the way through. Let me draw this again. Okay, here's the wood chamber. And I will start with an initial bore that goes all the way through at a particular size using one of these size drill bits. And then I will um, drill. I start with a size that will fit the tenon and the uh, the tip. Then once I get all of that put together and glued, I will put it in the uh, lathe, and then I will adjust this size as needed for the final tobacco chamber, the, the cigar chamber. I hope this is making sense. So what I need to figure out: well, what is the best size to use for this initial? you know, bore. Uh, the best thing to do and the thing that I'm going to do is select a drill bit of one size and drill them all out to that size and then just increase them, you know, on the lathe to the final diameter. So the smallest hole that I'm going to need for the cigar chamber is a 0.69. Any drill bit bigger than 0.69 is going to be too big. So I'll come over here to my chart here and you see here 11 sixteenths of an inch is basically would be a one-to-one -one, um, fit. So I could do 11 sixteenths, I could do 5 eighths, I could do um, 9 sixteenths, I could even do a half. A half is probably too small. So I really just have to select one and I, you know, haven't really figured out which one I'm going to use yet. Probably... 5 eighths is probably the one that I will go with. Now, then I thought about something else. Let's go back down here. There's two ways that I can do this um, uh, construction. Let me pause there. I'll get back to that because I, I need to explain one other thing first. Over here, I did the math on what's going to be the total final diameter of these three cigar holders. So I take the largest bore size, and I added a quarter of an inch. That gives a one-eighth inch wall thickness. Multiply that by two, and you get a quarter of an inch, which is 0.25. So the final diameter for the largest one is going to come in just a little bit above one inch. You know, 1.08, 1.1, or 1.01, and 0.95. So they're all coming in right at about one inch. So I have this large piece of Delrin that is a one inch piece of Delrin. So this is the piece that I will use 
to make the actual final tip. I'll just cut this in three pieces, fashion a tenon, we'll go from there. Now, one thing I was thinking about, and I haven't figured out which what I want to do yet. Ultimately, I will cut these into three equal lengths. I will either put it in a lathe and neck it down to where there's a tenon, or the other thing that I could do is I could take this smaller Delrin rod, which is going to fall on the floor, I could bore this out and bore out the, uh, the chamber piece and make a tenon out of this. That's actually how custom pipe makers make pipe stems. They'll use a smaller size, this 3 8 inch Delrin, bore a hole through it, cut it to length, and that becomes the tenon for a smoking pipe stem. I could do the same thing here. However, there is a drawback to that. Every glue joint that you do in any project is potentially a source of weakness. I know a lot of people in the woodworking community say things like, well, actually, the glue joint is stronger than the material itself. That's not particularly true when you're working with plastic. Um, I have found many, many times over the years that the joints that I have put together for smoking pipes inevitably failed. And so I could either, you know, use this for a tenon, which means there would be Basically, you know, it would extend into here and extend into here. And then this whole thing would be one big glue joint. Potential source of failure. Or I could just, you know, neck down the end here and have only one glue joint. And this would be much stronger. Haven't totally figured out which way I want to go yet. Um, part of it depends on, I did the measurements on this. And to cut this into three equal lengths is going to come in just a little bit above two and three quarter inches which means I'm going to need at least three quarters of an inch to make the tenon which leaves two inches to fashion the actual smoking tip haven't decided yet whether or not that's going to be long enough if I do the uh, tenon out of the smaller rod then that will give me a full two and three quarter inch length to make the um, uh, smoking tip out of. The, the advantage of that is it's a more comfortable smoke. And I think I explained that earlier in my opening remarks that if you, if you try to bring this down too quickly and make a short tip, it pushes against your lips. And every time you move your mouth or anything, it wants to shoot out of your mouth like a rocket because of that tension that it's under, you know, pushing against your lips. A longer, narrow, well, there goes the garage door. It is very windy tonight. Um, a longer, thinner tip, you know, makes more, what I consider to be a more comfortable smoke. So that's the game plan. Three holders covering six different ring gauges uh, using the uh, um, black Delrin as the, uh, the tip, the uh, wood blanks for the actual tobacco chambers, I think that's going to be a good look. Um, you know, there'll be, you know, the chamber plus the tip, and then I'll put an accent material in here. Haven't figured out what to do with that yet. Got a couple things in mind. Um, so, yeah, I think this is going to work out really well.